Amen. Well, lately we have been asking ourselves a few questions. The first question that we, I need us to keep asking yourself, ourselves throughout the year and even beyond. Number one is we need to know whose we are. The first question was, whose are you? Who do you belong to? Hallelujah. And we discover that we belong to God. We are God's children. They are God's people and they are God's children. As many as received him and believed in him, he gave them the right to become children. So if you believe in him, you are his child. Hallelujah. Last week we saw another question that we asked ourselves. If once we know whose we are, then we will know who we are. So we were answering the question, who are you? Who are you? The question of identity. When you talk about the young people, as Apostle Jen talks to them and ministers to them, you will find out that most of them are suffering with identity issues. Identity issues. There are many things that are trying to define them. You see, if you don't know yourself, many things will define you. People will define you. Teachers will define you. As a matter of fact, most of our kids are being labeled. They have got labels at school. So when you come at home, when they come at home, remove those labels in the name above every name because that's not who they are. Amen. That's not who they are. They struggle with identity issues. Some of them do not know whether they are boys or girls. And this, in this season, I understand they are giving them the opportunity to put on what they want. If, he feels, if the boy feels like he's a girl, then he's free to put on a dress. What kind of crazy stuff is that? You understand? And this is happening under our watch, guys. We need to, you know, to be sharp. So even as adults, if we don't know who we are, Things begin, things begin to, to... Recently, you heard of this guy, as a, news, a news anchor, who has been married for 27 years. He has a wife and two daughters, and he discovered that he's gay. In the, in the night. You understand? What kind of... Anyway. So today, I want us to attempt to ask, to answer the question, why am I here? Why are you here? In the few minutes that we have, we'll try and touch that, tackle that subject. But if we don't, we will tackle it another time. Pray for me. This very week, I will be traveling to Uganda. I need your prayers. I will be traveling with a very important guest to Uganda, who has never been there, by the names of Elisha Guma. So, pray for him as he travels to meet his uh, his, his ancestors. He's got to see where, where he comes from. He's got to go and milk a cow. He's got to milk a cow. Hallelujah. He's got, he's got to, 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 to walk where I walked. Mm. He's got to hold a hoe and dig and, and, see, and see how... <laughs> he's, that's it. he's beginning to, to, be, to, to, be, to be scared. You know, that's... So today we are talking about finding your purpose. Finding your purpose. There are questions that you as an individual need to ask yourself. Why were you created? Why are you still alive? Yesterday we were at a funeral. I was, I was leading a funeral service somewhere. One of our brothers who, who lost a young brother. You know? And uh, whenever you, feel, you, visit, you, you go for a funeral service, it's like a reminder. We know how to cost in life and forget about these things. We live as if we are here permanently and forget to deal with where we are going. We invest more in where we are temporarily and forget to invest more in where we are going to be permanently. It's a travesty. I'm telling you that the truth. How can you invest? You know, I know most of you here were not born here, but I know it. You don't have to tell me. I know that you invest more. Where you come from? Not here, because you, in your mind, you know that here you are here temporarily. We came here for these kids. These kids, they're the ones that will, will, will take on the baton. But God giving me life, I hit 65, 70. I cannot survive. I cannot stay in this winter. I refuse to stay in this winter. I refuse to be wheeled by desire into, into, into a nursing home and be left there. Yes. I refuse. I refuse. For those of, most of us here have worked in those nursing homes and we know what it takes. The, the parents are forgotten. And you know why? Life has to continue. 
Life has to continue. Right now, I don't even know my parents. They are there. I'm not there. So, there are times when I want to take to, to drop my, my, my son at school. And he says, no. He says, no. At times, I, I just come and, 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 you, and we, we, we drive that journey when he's annoyed because I, have, I, I am I'm inconveniencing him. He's now of age. Well, he doesn't want, he doesn't need a school run anymore. <laughs> Let's go back to our subject. Why are you still alive? Why are you still here? Why on earth are you still breathing? There's a question. Why? You need to have a why. Hallelujah. Why means for what reason? The reason for which something, a what, is done. It's the reason, the why for which someone exists. The why for the what and the who. There is a, a powerful word that evades most of us at times. And we coast along in life trying and fumbling with that word. That word is purpose. What is your purpose? Turn to that neighbor and ask them, what is your purpose? Synonyms for the word purpose are words like function. What is your function? You are not here just to breathe, to consume oxygen. You are not here just to procreate. You are here for more than that. You are not here to work that job. By the way, that job does not describe who you are. You are not defined by that job. You, um, you should be, listen, you should be more than that job. Purpose. You have been purpose built. Hallelujah. Purpose built. Things or products are not made for fun. How many people watch How It Is Made? There's a program called How It Is Made. I love that program. Those manufacturers are not there for just a whim. They are not there for a joke. They are there for a purpose. Every product is designed to answer a why. Every what answers a why. And every who must answer a why. Hallelujah. That who includes you. Or well, let me qualify it another way. It includes that person sat in your chair. Because when I talk about you, you begin to, you know, to be defensive. You are designed for something. Manufacturers make things to serve a purpose. If a man does not make anything, if man, sorry, if man does not make anything without a purpose, what about God? Do you think God makes things without purposes? He has a purpose for you. That's why you are here. That's why you live. That's why you are still breathing. That's why you are not in the cemetery, but you are in the sanctuary. Like my Nigerian friends would say. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And listen, something, a product or somebody, is not a product of themselves. You are not a product of yourself. You are a product of somebody. <laughs> Someone made the thing. Every one of us is putting on a product. Some of them come from China, some of them from Germany, some of them from wherever. There's this, I've told you about this guy, you know, who, who, had, who had an issue with, uh, with, with the word made. And he was reading it in our, in our vernacular, Made. And he would say, Made, 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 this man Made has money. This man Made must be very rich. And they asked him, what do you mean? He said, everything you find, Made, Made, China, Made, Germany, Made, England, you know? Everything has got where it originates. It's made somewhere. You are made from somewhere. Hallelujah. Now, it's not the product that determines the, process, the function or the purpose. Rather, it is the maker who determines the purpose. Did you get that? This microphone I'm using did not determine its purpose. No, the person who made it is the one who determined its purpose. The purpose emanates from the maker. He's the one who has the design. He's the one who has the blueprint. He's the one who has seen it before it existed. The people, who are we? We are God's children. We cannot determine our own purpose. Why? Because we did not create ourselves. You did not create ourselves. You did not make yourself. 
Therefore, you cannot live for yourself. This microphone cannot live for itself. It has got to live for the purpose for which it was created. Hallelujah. And there was no amens in the house. You are going to say amen whether you want it or not. Mm. That's why he says, I am the what? The porter. And you are the what? The clay. You are clay. And the porter will design you and mold a piece of clay according to the purpose for which he wants it. So keep asking yourself the why. Why am I like this? Why am I? There's the reason why. Good. Keep asking. You are asking the right people. But if you are asking other people, you are asking the wrong person. You need to go back to the manufacturer. That word formed, he designed, he molded, he created for a purpose. The product is referred to as his workmanship. His workmanship or his handiwork. The other word is handiwork. When I was growing up, my father used to work in a, in, in a part of Uganda called Kilembe. He was a miner. He was a miner and that's where we grew up studying. But once, once in a while he would take us to the villages to go and, uh, and experience village life. Uh, he would take us to, to a school in a village for a, a term or two. And in these, uh, in these, in these schools, they had, they had a subject called handwork. Is anybody... Yeah? You know what I'm talking about. Handwork. I hated handwork with a passion. Because handwork involved, in, in fact, hands. But I had grown up in the city. So I, in the town, I didn't know how anything to do with that. So I would, I would dodge handwork lessons. When, others, when other guys were presenting what they have done, for me, I was presenting nothing. We are God's handwork. That's what he says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. What's the purpose? Good works. Unto good works. Which we are prepared when? Which we are prepared when? Beforehand that we should walk in them. The product cannot precede the purpose. Can't. The purpose is determined beforehand. Are we together? Purpose would do good works. They were determined before you were born. How do I know that? Jeremiah 1 4 tells us. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, huh? Before. That was the key words. Before. The word there is before. The key word there is before. Before, before I did what? I formed you. Before I designed you. Before I fashioned you. Before I put a shape on you. Before I formed you. I did what? In your mother's womb. Before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were even born. Before that nose appeared here. I sank to, I knew, before, before I, I'm, I'm jumping, before I formed you in your womb, in your mother's womb, I knew you. He knew you. He knew me. When you know something, that means, it means that you have seen it. You have met it. So, Pastor Godfrey uh, was saying this morning that he's 51. I want to announce to him that he's more than 51. Because God knew him even before he entered his mother's womb. You understand? You are older than who you think you are. Because he knew you. You were in his mind. Hallelujah. You were in his mind. 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 You were fashioned beforehand. Beforehand. And that's where we come in. We get the scripture from Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man. He formed. You were formed. He formed. The, the potter is making the clay. He formed man out of the dust. And I'm going to tell you here that I am just a pile of dust and I'm useless if I don't have his breath in me. So when, when we say somebody has died, that means God has taken his breath away. The breath in which that he breathed into this form, into this body, into this clay, into this lump of dust that he had made, that is what is called life. And he did that for a purpose. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 16. Let's have those scriptures. For you were what? You were formed. You are not an accident. You were formed. You were formed. You were made. You were formed. For you formed my inward. 
parts. There are parts of you that you will never see. And those parts that you never see, you will never see are what keeps you running. You consist of parts that you don't even see. Right now, sat in that chair. You know how many times you are, you are breathing right now. And even before I mentioned that you were breathing, it was, you didn't even think about it. But you are breathing. They say we breathe about 23,000, almost 23,000 breaths a day. And you, in your body are systems that are working together right now. Over for about 14 body systems. Each individual, but yet working in tandem with the rest. And imagine how he made you. He formed in your inner, your inner parts. And you covered me in my mother's womb. Wow. He formed you. He fashioned your inner parts and knit you together. Another Bible says, and you knit me together. Yes, I think it's the, it's, it's the next verse. Next verse. I will praise you. Why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows and that my soul knows very well. You were what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Going back to Jeremiah, I formed you. Before I formed you, I knew you and I consecrated you before you were even born. I set you apart for a mission, for a purpose. But we see Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 14 to 18. He does not like himself. Just like most of us don't like ourselves. Jeremiah 20, 14. Cursed be the day which I was born. This is Jeremiah. Let the day not be blessed in which my mother bore me. Yet God said when? That he knew him before he was even formed in his mother's womb. Let the man be cursed who brought news to my father, saying a male child has been born to you, making him very glad. Can you imagine what's going on? That's the, that's the conflict I've been talking about, the, the conflict of identity. That's why most people, you, that's why you look in that mirror and look at that nose and begin to hate it. And some of us want to do a nose job, we want to be a hair, do a hair job, we want to do an ear job, all these things, just because we do not love that which God knew before you even appeared here. That nose is like that for a purpose. There's no other nose like this one here. I love this nose. Because there's no me. There's no other me. Go and search throughout the world. You will not find another Reuben. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made for a purpose. My purpose is not your purpose. The reason people still keep, keep trying... To, to, to live Jeremiah's life where he, he got to this point and began to hurt himself is because we do not know whose we are. We do not know why he made us. And so for us to, 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 to get our purposes, we, we tend to look next door. We tend to compare ourselves with somebody else. <laughs> the reason, there's a reason why God gave us short hair. Africans. Oh, none. Because of this weather, this weather is not the weather of Africa. <laughs> There's a reason why God made you black and not white. So stop going into a fit and say, I wish I was born white. No. Bleach, yesterday we've met somebody who is over, who is over bleach right now. The conflict. Jeremiah, I hate this person that I am. You've got to love yourself. Love you because you were made fearfully and wonderfully and for a purpose. God knew you before you arrived here. That kid that you keep kicking down, down the stairs. Oh my God. He was, he was fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> he may be hooked on drugs. He may be, you know, the reason why I am here standing here is because I was loved. I was loved. Even when I went wayward. Your child may go wayward. That's why she's looking after the young people. Most of those young people, by the way, have been discarded by their parents. Because they did not live to the expectations of their parents. So this child, they kicked them out. 
love your children. Love them until God changes them. You are not God. You were not created to change that child. Just give back him back to his maker. The clay cannot ask the potter, what are you doing? He knows best what he is doing. He knew the purpose. That's why he says in Isaiah 29.10, he says, can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? You know, when we begin to question God about our features, about our, phys- our, our physical features or whatever, we are, it's like we are telling God, you know nothing. When you were created me, what, what were you thinking about? There's these people who tell, there are these people who tell others that you, when God was creating that nose, he was tired. He just slapped it on somebody. God was not tired when he was making you. He had a mind full of you. He had it planned. He put all his effort in you. You are wonderfully made, my friend. Do not let anybody talk you down. I don't care who they are. Our young people here, do not let anybody belittle you to the point that you, you, you look like nothing just because of your color, just because of your, of your background. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Should anybody who says anything derogatory to you, just turn to them and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God took his time. He took time to create this handsome man. You may not see me as handsome, but I know that I am handsome. I do not need you to tell me that I am handsome. I tell me. Isaiah 45, 9. Woe to him who strives with him who formed his, him, him in him. Woe, is he to, woe to him who strives with him who formed him. Isaiah 45, 9. <laughs> woe to him who strives with his maker. When you strive with your maker, you are striving with your purpose. That's why most of us do not function in the purposes that we were created for because we are busy striving with the person who made us. Why did you make me this way? Why was I born in Africa? Why was I born to this family? You begin comparing yourself with those other families. You have no idea what is happening behind those gates. Yeah. See this woman driving a huge car, a jeep by you. She has, she has, she has, with a, a, adorning serious, you know, glasses, sunglasses that cover the whole face. And you think, oh, she, she's being stylish. Little do you know that she's hiding bruises. Last week, last night, the husband boxed her like a punching bag. Romans 9, 20, 21. Romans 9, 20, 21. But indeed, O oh man, indeed, O oh Reuben, put your name there. Who are you to reply against God? Will the thing formed say to he who formed it, why have you made me like this? These things are written and every time you stay in that mirror, you don't even want to look at the person you are staring, that's staring back at you. <laughs> you are questioning God. You are annoying God. This microphone cannot go back. So it cannot even ask this, the, the, whoever made it. It will just function and do its job. Do what you were created to do. Absolutely be do you. Someone aptly said, living without God's plan for your life is like sewing without a needle and without a thread. Or writing one's biography without a pen or one that is without ink. <laughs> do you think that you are living your purpose? That's the question today. And if you are not, you need to find out. Adam was born to cultivate the garden. Abraham was born to start a new nation for the Lord. Moses was born to deliver the children of Israel from the bondage of the Egyptians. Joseph was born to preserve life in the land in the time of famine. John the Baptist was born to turn men to Christ and to prepare a way for the Lord. Jesus Christ was born to save his own people from sin. Paul was born to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. What about you? What about you? The great and glorious masterpiece of man is to know how to live his purpose. You cannot live your purpose if you don't know your purpose. That's why we need to go back to the creator, the one who made, who made us. I, 
cannot figure it out myself. That's why I need him. This year, I want you to make prayers of inquiry to know who you are, why you are here, why you are still alive. You need to know the things, the purpose for which you were created. If you are, you know, that's why men, we have issues. We, we tend to, this, recently, by the way, there's, there's something that I blew up, Nicholas. There's a machine that I blew up. One of the machines that we used to cut. I blew it up. I put it in the machine, some, and I don't know why I did it. It just went into smoke, into smoke, you know, started coming from everywhere. You know why? Because I did not consult the manual. I didn't know how to operate it. You know how many, things, how many times you have blown yourself? Because you did not refer to the manual. You go back to the, to, to, to the owner. If you do not know the reason or the purpose for something, you will abuse it. You will abuse it. If you, know, if you don't know its purpose, you, it will not function properly. Has anybody watched this movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy? Somebody in an, in an aeroplane is flying and he drinks this bottle of, of, of uh, Pepsi or whatever. Then he opens this window and throws it down. And this, window, this, this bottle comes and falls into this bushland where we've got bushmen. And the bushmen pick, this, pick up this bottle. They look at this bottle, they do not understand what it is. What is this? It is foreign to them. So one of them begins to think that, okay, it, it, he can use it to crush some stuff. Another, another one gets another use for it. Another one gets another use for it. They do not know that it's used, it's, it's purpose is to be drunk from. So at the end of the day, they began, fight, they began fighting because everyone was wanting it wanting to do his own purpose. It is meant for this. The other one thinks it's meant for this. And at the end of the day, the, the old man, the, the chief of that village said, you know what? This thing, this evil thing is causing us problems. I'm going to take it to the end of the world and throw it. And he done it. And we know the story. Some of you watch. You go and watch that film. You will see, you see what I'm talking about. If you don't, know, you don't know the purpose of something, you will be frustrated. And you have no idea how many of us are frustrated. Frustrated. Are you frustrated like me? I need to find why I'm here. I need to do what which I was born to do. And once you find the meaning and purpose of what you are meant to do, you will live a fulfilled life. You will live a rewarding life. Amen. I'm going to summarize this so we can finish. Advantages of knowing your purpose. Romans 8, 28. For we know that how many things? All things work together for what? For good to those who love God and who are called what? According to his purpose. Remember, it is, it is his purpose, not your purpose, because you do not live for you. So the moment you know your purpose, guess what? You will have the tenacity to endure any hardship that comes your way. Because you will begin to look at every hardship and everything that comes your way in the lenses of purpose. Does that make sense to somebody? You will endure. A manufacturer will subject whatever he has made to rigorous tests. He will crush a helmet at, you know, at speeds that you could never even imagined. Why? Because he wants to make sure that once it's on the market, it will not crash easily. That's, that's why they even give you a guarantee. That's why people in Africa, they want things from Britain. Hey, things from England, they've, they've got guarantee. That's what they say. They've got what? Guarantee. Guarantee is not something you just slap on a product. Guarantee is something that comes out of being tested. So the reason, my friend, you are going through whatever you are going through is because God wants to slap guarantee on you after you have passed all those tests. Hallelujah. So when you know your purpose, you will, that helmet I'm talking about cannot run away from the process of being tested. Because it's, it knows if it's not tested, what, the moment it gets into the, into the market and breaks easily, it will be discarded. It will, it will just head for the, for the, for the dunk, dunk heap. But the moment you know who you are, every problem that comes through you, you, know, you will look at it according to Romans 8.28. For I know that all things, all things mean, means all. Do not scratch your head trying to, de to, to de define the word all. All means all. They're good and they're bad. Yeah. They're working together. 
The key word is that they're, they're doing what? They're working together in tandem for my good. They are not there to kill you. They are there to take you to another level. You are being tested because God wants to, to God will never use anybody that is not tested. I will say that with authority. God cannot use you if he has not tested you. And guess what? Most of us run out of the test. That's why we are not used of God. Because we do not know our purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge of purpose gives you tenacity. It increases your adversity conscient. You are able, we are, we are good with IQ, we are good with, some of us are still struggling with EQ, emotional, emotional conscient, our emotions are not that good, you know, but we, to become a strong person, your adversity conscient has got to be tops. You've got to be able to endure whatever comes to you. It is only a person of purpose. If you go to people who have succeeded, they will tell you that they have gone through stuff. Some of them have been bankrupt. I don't know how many times, but they kept on coming back. The ability to come back when you are thrown down is what makes you successful, is what makes you significant. The, 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 the capacity to keep climbing, to keep climbing the mountain, to keep climbing the mountain, to keep climbing the mountain of your purpose is what makes you. Because the more you climb, guess what? The enemy and the circumstances, people, like we had this morning, people will throw debris at you. They will throw rocks at you. So at once, at the more, when you climb five steps, they throw some stuff at you and you fall back seven times. And you, you have about maybe seven steps. And some of us just give up because there, was, there has been impediments on the way. You cannot afford to give up. A man of purpose will not give up. They will say, they will, the Bible says, a righteous man will fall how many times? Seven times, but he will wake up, dust himself, and say, I am back. I am back. He will climb. Such people are called climbers. Are you a climber? We have got three kinds of people. We have got quitters. The moment, I, the, moment the debris comes, they say, oh, it hits you in the face. You run away. This is not meant for me. Then we have got campers. You come to a place that is a place somewhere, somewhere comfortable. Ah, at least I have climbed some plane. At least I have covered some altitude. And you sit. So you are working and operating below your capacity. Some of us are operating below our capacity and that annoys the maker. That annoys the maker. We need to keep climbing. We need to be climbers who keep climbing. I am keeping climbing. I will keep on climbing until I get the summit of my purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Know your purpose. Find out your purpose. How do you find out your purpose as we finish? You find out your purpose number one. By knowing what you are passionate about. What is your passion? Do you have a passion? Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we need to start educating our children to take on courses that are in line with their passion. I normally use this example. We have got in this country many nurses who are not nurses. Just because it was the, 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 the only opportunity. Hey, everybody, got, hey, these days, you know what? The money is in nursing. Everybody. So we have got people who just inject you. They inject people when they are looking the other side. They are not nurses. They not, we have got... And most of us parents are the ones that kill our kids. You're going to study what? Music? Ask him. A few, a few, a few years ago, we had, we, had a, we had a conversation, this young man here. He said he wanted to study something, and for me, in my mind, I wanted him to study this. Because all his, 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 his uncles are... You don't, don't, don't you, in our family, we are lawyers. So you want your child to become a lawyer like uncle so and so why doesn't the child become like him find out what the child is guide him in that passion i'm not saying just leave him you know nagarare guide them guide them research with them what is the career path in that passion of his or hers some of them are, have got passion for fashion and for you, you want them to be a doctor this person is going to go in Africa. Most of the parents of the children, just, they, just, they, just, they just continue you know, following the whims of their parents. They started to become a doctor. 
only to spend the rest of their time disappointed because they were not doctors in the first place. What is your purpose? Are you doing what your purpose is? Are you functioning in your purpose? What is your passion? What makes, what makes you cry? What keeps you awake in the ministry? What is your passion? Some of us want, Pastor, I want to know who I am in the Lord. My question is, what is your passion? What are you passionate about? Are you passionate about kids? This is a woman who has found her purpose. She's passionate about young... I'm sorry, I'm using you a lot here. She has found her purpose in young children. When I had never seen her, but the person who was speaking to her, about, to, 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 to us about her, said that this woman, if she's walking on the streets and finds a kid who is, you know, delinquent or, you know, doing, doing some stuff that is not right, she will bleed. She, even when you're in a serious conversation, you will see her heart going towards the kid like this because that's where her heart is. That is her passion. Do you have a passion for the homeless? Do you have a passion for the girls in the village who did not get education that you had? Do you have an... What is your passion? Why were you created? You were created to fix an issue. You were, you were created to help God do something because God... He is a spirit. He cannot come here as a spirit and do things. He needs a body through whom he may work. And that's you and I. Your passion. What is your passion? Connect with your passion. Connect with your passion. Connect with your passion. Connect. Find your passion. Find yourself. This year, may you find yourself and discover yourself and stop living another person's life. Hallelujah. Once you find yourself, ladies and gentlemen, as I finish, you will begin to live bigger than yourself. You will lose yourself. Because listen, your purpose is bigger than you. Your purpose is bigger than you. If your purpose, if you are bigger than your purpose, you have a career. It's just a job. And that one you can retire to, from. <laughs> but if your purpose is bigger than the job that you do, then you are living. A person has not started living if he's still living for himself. Me, myself, my kids, and my home, and my dog, and you are not you haven't started living your purpose because you were created for a reason more than you, bigger than you. Hallelujah. The question is, in the amount that you earn, is there a budget for somebody other than you? Is there a budget for somebody other than your children? <laughs> God is not going to use you if you are in this cocoon, in this small you, thinking about you. You are not you have started living your purpose. Purpose is bigger than you. Find it. Once you find yourself, you will lose yourself in other people. I live to serve the Lord. I live to help somebody. I live to speak into somebody. Therefore, the moment I discover why I am alive, my purpose, I begin to purpose to grow and develop myself. How do I do that? By number two. number two. Number one, I said, you first find yourself how? By your passion. Number two, you find yourself or your purpose through your giftings. What are you gifted at? I cannot have my purpose as my purpose to play the keyboard <laughs> or to play the drums or to sing like Emma. <laughs> That's not my purpose because I am not good at it. That's not my gifting. You have no idea how many instruments I have bought in the house. I have bought a guitar. It tried to play it. It, it, it gathered dust. I just the keyboard is, is in the living room there. I look at it every day and I say, one day I'm gonna play you. <laughs> why don't I play it year in, year out? Because it's not my gifting. So why should I waste my time doing something in which I am weak? If you want to take away anything from this, this, this um, someone. Never concentrate on things in which you are weak. Because 
you are powerful in the somebody is powerful in the area where you are weak leave it for them <laughs> concentrate on the areas where you are powerful work on your strength cultivate on your strength are you a speaker get any book about speaking you know learn speaking are you a musician get you, you should hear these guys you know practicing at times i say i want at times i want to say the noise is too much in the house but then afterwards i discover that it's their purpose and then i just leave these boys it's the drum away <laughs> can i ask you a question what are you working on this year what are you working on to improve to become better become better strive to become better in your areas of strength because you do not have time wasting on your areas of weakness now this is not a, I'm not talking about sin here sin that one you need we need to work on if you are if there's a, an area where you are sinful you are struggling that you've got to work upon I'm talking about gifts giftings here concentrate on them because that's where your purpose is hallelujah every eye bowed every head bowed rather not i why are you here why are you still breathing do you know your passions nehemiah knew why he lived even when he was in the king's palace that was his job but that was not his purpose let me tell you you need to come to a point where you differentiate between your job and your purpose your job is not your purpose you are bigger than your job you are bigger than your career find that you have any giftings develop them get crazy on them we sing this song felis navita on christmas this young man felis navita it was written and played by a blind man this young blind man would lock himself hours upon hours hours on end and he would play this guitar he would play a guitar he would play the guitar until his fingers began to bleed what was he doing he was perfecting his gifting he discovered who he was and who he is and today he's a multimillionaire blind but multimillionaire steve wonder we know him we is basketballers the footballers we just said why are they paid so much you you have you have any idea how much they invest in that sport I think running for 90 minutes is a joke you run for 5 minutes and you are panting like you know so find your purpose this year because god needs you to function your church needs you to function your community needs you to function your family needs you to function this country needs you to function there are people out there who need you to function who depend on you find yourself that you may lose yourself in them seek god for your purpose for your passion what is my passion follow your passion follow it kids young young people who are still here trying to go into university you you, you still have time to change that course before you waste a lot of money and get out in, from university in huge debt for a course that you didn't want even use anyway you still have the time to change it father we give you the praise we honor you lord of glory we thank you for we are fe- fearfully and wonderfully made we thank you for you made us for a purpose a purpose as greater than us a purpose that is bigger than as, as big as you Father may we discover our purposes may we discover why we are here that we may begin to live that we may begin to function that we may begin to do that which you created us to do Father help me help my brothers and sisters help my sons and daughters in the name above every name that we may be effective that we may be functional in that which you created us for and once all is said and done Father we'll give you back the glory because it belongs to you alone we give you the praise the honor and the glory somebody gives the lord